Hi everybody, this is Ed here from Osric Tentacles. You're listening to Mystery Tour Radio Show. I hope you have a nice day and it's all wonderful. Have fun. So, dear Ed, what shall the Italian fans expect from your forthcoming Italian tour? Well, most of you have seen it before, so you know roughly what to expect. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, it's, it's going to be more of the same, but uh, with, with new tunes and a uh, really nice new drummer we have as well. And, and um, yeah, it's, it's just going to be... Uh, Music from our new album right the way back to our first album across the across the time and um, hopefully plenty of energy and uh, can't wait. How would you describe the sound of Lotus Unfolding to the listeners and how did you approach the recording and production process for this album? Well, the same as I always do. I sort of spend a year um, making tunes as a way of life, you know, and then... Uh, When it comes to time for an album, I have a look through my little catalogue and I select six or seven good tunes which are going to be good enough to go on the album. Mm -hmm. And then gradually push them in the direction until they're ready, you know. Um, and this particular Lotus Unfolding album, I don't know, it, it seems... Well, the title track is very relaxing, which is unusual for us. It's, the, it's to yeah. choose the chill track for the title. It's, I think it's nice, you know. People need to, need to calm down a bit these days. They need to unfold. How technology is important nowadays when it comes to composing and recording for other tentacles? Well, um, for me, it's uh, I've used technology all the way through my career, mm -hmm. but but it gets easier. I mean, now it's so much so much easier mm -hmm. than it used to be. Um, everything is tiny, so you don't have to carry everything around the place. So it's all small things, and uh, it's been kind of streamlined so that the ideas can flow quickly without the technology in the way. This is the thing. It used to be if I had an idea in my head, I would have to go and switch on the keyboards and plug everything in, make sure it's coming through and get the recorder working and all that. And by this time, I've almost forgotten the, the idea. But now it's literally, if, if I have an idea, it's probably about 20 seconds. <laughs> and I can get a of it recorded down now really quick. It's brilliant. I love it. <laughs> Your youth has been marked by the personal acquaintance of great musicians thanks to your father. How has this issue shaped your, your perception of music, both as a listener and as a composer? Well, I've always, been in, in, I've always loved listening to music, and it's shaped my perception in a way that I grew up amongst quite a few musicians and artistic people, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was, it was uh, worked into my mind that... It's an okay way to grow up. It's an all right career to have. And it's, you know, this is what you do. You grow up and you become an artist is what I was led to believe. So this is, you know, it very much shaped it. And uh, I'm very thankful to all these people. I was, I was like this little young kid running around with all these musicians everywhere, you know. Um, <laughs> and I thought they were great. And I wanted, to, wanted some of that. I wanted to be that, really, basically, you know. Which memories do you have of the Osrix until, let's say, Become the Other, in terms of lineup, audience, general atmosphere, a very different uh, era? Yeah, it's very different, yet, yet pretty similar also. Yeah. It seems, I mean, from my, from my perception, when I'm playing live and I look out to the audience, they look exactly the same <laughs> as they used to, <laughs> which is funny, you know. Maybe we bring this out in people, I don't, I'm not quite sure how it works, but... Uh, Really, it's not that different. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's not that different. It's still the same. We still have fun. We still go out. We play silly tunes and hopefully blow people's minds and have fun with it and, and tour the world. And yeah, it's, it's pretty similar, really. And I'm so happy that it carries on like this. You know, it's lovely. Uh, do you have any extra Osric's ongoing projects at the moment? I mean, will there be also a follow up to Tumbling Through the Floativerse? Oh, oh. I don't know. This is. I would like to. I would very much like to. Mm. It depends on what the record company wants. Um, I have another album ready to go, pretty much already, and the next Osric album. But maybe it will not be Osric. Maybe it will be me on my own. I don't know. It depends what they think is the right thing to do. They're, from my point of view, it's just tunes I make, and uh, yeah, um, we'll see. We'll have to see. I'm. I'm just sitting here making tunes. <laughs> we'll see where they want to put them. In terms of uh, musical education, how did you approach music? It didn't make any sense to me at all. Okay. Music, not, not at all. No, I, I found it very complicated trying to learn how to read music and being taught about music theory. Because for me, it seems like you don't really need that theory if you know what you're going to do anyway. If you know the notes and you know what to play and you know what it needs to sound like and you are able to do this, then, I mean, 
I know I'm outnumbered here, but I find it the, the theory gets in the way of the magic a little bit for me. You know? Are you into some current uh, music bands? Uh, you know, at the moment, there is something that uh, interests you more. Uh, well, it's yeah, la, la. Um, normally it's my friend's music that I listen to. Really, I've, there's a, there's a there's a friend of mine. He just put out an, a recent album mm -hmm. under the name of Headspin. Headspin, mm -hmm. and I listened to it yesterday, and it's absolutely wonderful. It's very Osric, you know, but it's kind of different energy there. Um, what else? I, obviously, I like Grace Rooms because he was the guy I did this tumbling through the Float Floativerse album with. I love his music. Um, I don't get out much musically. <laughs> I'm normally in the yeah. studio on my own, doing my own tunes and, and feeding the cats and. Uh, looking at the trees outside. <laughs> yeah, in fact, I, w I wanted to ask you, which are your extra musical inspirations uh, in your life? Well, just life, really. Life and uh, life and the odd tune I hear. I, I, I hear tunes sometimes um, without knowing what on earth they are. I, you know, most, mostly when I hear a tune, I don't know what it is because it just comes and goes on Spotify or something. But uh, the little bits that I like sort of seem to go in one ear And then they'd sort of churn around in my mind, and then sort of a few months later, maybe something similar will come out of my guitar playing fingers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know. Well, do you have any personal memories, musical and extra musical, about, uh, you know, related to Italy? Oh, just the fact that um, it was the first country, apart from um, UK, that welcomed us. Um, oh. You know, we were. Uh, because the, it seemed like you, you guys in Italy picked up on our band quicker than any other country in Europe. And we were, I can remember people starting to say things that they really like you in Italy now. And I was going, oh, yeah, great. You know, and they said, right, well, let's do some gigs there. And, and so we, we did. We went, we, went out, we went out ages ago and, um, and did a tour there. It was confusing for us because we hadn't played in Europe before and we were wondering how it works. I think we got there a few days early, so we had to wait in our bus for three or four days without knowing about anybody in Italy. We, I think we stayed in Genova underneath a bridge somewhere and it was raining a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, but then, then when, once the first gig came along, then it was time and it was great, absolutely lovely. We couldn't believe the reception and, and the welcome. And it was just fantastic. I, I, it's one of my favorite countries to play, actually, to be honest. Yeah. Steve Hackett from Genesis told me the, the same, that Italy was the first place that uh, some kind of adopted the Genesis uh, outside the UK. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. It's very, very funny. I don't know even why, really, why it happened like that, just by chance. I remember some quite, you know, wild gigs in the 90s, like at Leon Cavallo, the squad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That one was great. Uh, we couldn't believe that place, Leon Cavallo. We, we were amazed by that. Different sort of gig for us. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Which like uh, final message and greeting would you send out to your Italian fans and an invitation to join you during your Italian gigs? Well, I would say, you know, we'd, be, we'd love to have you along. If it's your kind of music, if you like music with color and psychedelic space and not too many vocals, come along and you will be happily entertained, hopefully. Best we can.